Good morning, everybody. Today is Saturday, August 24th. It's about 8.30 a.m. here in Pasadena. So the format of this going forward is going to be like this. I will publish a video on the publicly available pages that will recap the events of the past week, including the summary of the conference calls that I can release, and then provide new details that have been um, have taken place over the week, but without the sensitive information. The sensitive information will only be covered on the Monday night conference calls, which are subject to the email disclosure rules regarding uh, public disclosure of the information there for the benefit of everybody. As I explained, that information, uh, which was previously open to everybody, uh, was used to try to break relationships uh, we had in process, and the threat was issued to try to break future relationships. So that forced the change. But I'll try to cover as much of this uh, information as I can and only leave out uh, sensitive details if it's absolutely necessary. So again, the format is on Saturday morning, I'll release the, uh, a video which will summarize all of the week's um, events, including the Monday night conference call, and then give something of a preview as to what will be covered on the next Monday night conference call, which will be available only to the people who have uh, subscribe to the non-disclosure list, which you have that email, or you've received several copies of it, and you'll probably get a few more, so I make sure that everybody who does want that does actually get it. So uh, from the outline, here are the items we talked about. I was a pretty short call um, earlier this week. So the Uber story uh, being an economy story, I think paying attention to that is important because the pricing pressure created by Uber um, and their financials of their business, there's a huge disconnect there. So while they're basically, yes, they're creating a lot of business at the, at the price point, um, they're not making any money at that price point. So as you expand the reach, it's gonna, the loss is going to grow and grow and grow. So um, it's interesting because the economy is getting softer. That's the, the sentiment, um, I believe, based on all of the data that I've looked at personally. So keep an eye on this and keep an eye on how Uber stock trades and their financials to get an idea of where the economy really is. Um, number two, the um, JP, uh, JP Morgan Chase CEO Jamie Dimon says in a, from a survey of 200 CEOs that shareholder value alone is no longer the number one um, driver. So that's very uh, interesting. Um, I just went to this conference in Vegas, and John Mackey, the founder of Whole Foods, actually um, was one of the main speakers there. And he's sort of the advocate of this uh, conscious capitalism idea. And that's sort of what's, um, what's going on here with, with this statement. It's, it's along that kind of philosophy. Um, nothing of any significance to report in gambling on crypto. Simple agreement for future tokens. That was another ICO workaround. Um, SEC says no go. Um, Barclays terminates their banking relationship with Coinbase. More um, IRS warning letters are going out uh, regarding trip crypto transactions and uh, tax reporting. So um, on the Hero Club stuff, uh, lots to report here, including their uh, helping us with the um, response to the SEC um, filing of a civil action. Again, it's a civil action. It's not a criminal action. Um, these things happen. I'll get to that a little further down and try to put it in context. So the Vision 2020 conference is still on. That's December 8. I think it's 9 and 10, actually. Um, I have it marked as 8 through 11. There's two conference days. That's still going on. Um, everything we've been discussing in the prior conference calls is is nothing has changed. Um, everything is still moving along. Um, I put out the advisory piece for um, for the month of I'm sorry for the month of August. I, that's the uh, on the C-suite network. You can find that if you go to their uh, if you're interested. You can go to their their councils page or their experts page, and I have a page there. There's actually 12 of, or 13 of them there now. Um, I have. I submitted the um, assets and the basic contours of our presentation for an online panel that we'll be doing in September, on September 17th, um, having to do with, you know, you know, tying in a general theme while, of course, trying to get our message out there at the same time. That's what everybody does. You 
you teach and then you you use that um, teaching and and being something of a voice of expertise to then therefore explain how your thing whatever your thing is fits into the solution um, that's the best way to play this so we've submitted that and so that's kind of the first um, piece marketing piece leading into December uh, where we can move the message ahead actually the very first piece was the council advisory piece I just told you I published which is uh, a, a summary piece kind of on our um, on the on the NRHL deal and explaining what was learned from that so that was one then the next will be like an online panel in September and there will be further marketing pieces but that's that's all I've got for now. <clears throat> On Monday, um, we have a uh, another uh, session, basically the session abstract and the assets for the December piece are due. So, you know, it's August and this stuff is, I mean, it's August now for December. The stuff is already due. So that's going to be um, what I'm working on this weekend along with the team to determine what we want to have in our physical panel in December. That's the sit down uh, panel with Zach, Bernie, hopefully Ace, and and all of the um, the guests and things that we've talked about. Um, and I'd like to point out here. I think this was on maybe the private call, but I can say this publicly because I was given permission. Um, Jeff Hazlett is, has been um, friends with Donald Trump for a long time, and he helped uh, develop this Celebrity Apprentice show. You can find that for yourself online. Um, Trump has been invited to keynote the event, so uh, I'm putting that on the record here and with permission. That's not a joke. Uh, it's it's flat out what I was told, so maybe it happens, maybe it doesn't, but there it is. Um, so ideas, just walk, you know, thinking about um, how we position what, this may be a little bit rambling, but trying to cover everything. Um, we... Um, Try to position how we speak to the market about what ASM is offering. GoFundMe for sports is an idea we're throwing around because that's something I think most people understand. Uh, so, yeah, so Jeff, Trump, okay, so Sharon, um, co-inventor Sharon Brown, uh, I will put the invitation to her once we get a flyer from uh, C-Suite Hero Club. That's going to be due here uh, in about uh, a week, they said, end of the month. So I'll, I'll put that out, see if she will also... Of course, I will mention that her boss was invited, and I will mention the connection uh, to Jeff, the host of the whole thing. Also to be mentioned is uh, Keith Crotch, uh, the gentleman whose house we uh, were in in San Francisco last year. He's also a member of the Hero Club, and he is um, the political appointee that is Sharon's boss. He's the undersecretary for uh, economic development and the environment. Sharon is chief economist in the same in the in the State Department. Uh, she's chief economist in the State Department, and then Brandon is also a member of Brandon Steiner's a member of the club, and he's also a friend of Trump's from a while back. So I'll tie all that together to make the invitation to Sharon, and we'll see what happens. Um, she can speak about anything she wants. We're not. It's not appropriate to say, well, Sharon, you know, do you want to speak about our? That's not how this works. The way this works is you say, would you like to come and speak about whatever you want? Because this is all about growth next year. Um, it's in anticipation of an economic slowdown. That's the whole point of the conference. Um, the, the, the title is Vision 2020, Setting Your Sights on Future Growth. I think our proposition becomes more valuable now in this environment because it, the market is going to be seeking new things. Uh, where are the growth opportunities? You know, in the downturns, there always are a, a growth opportunities. And I, I've said for a number of weeks now, we need to be looking closer at the uh, the growth piece that that we can provide to the economy and those benefits, and then also as a sales proposition uh, for any potential investment that it's a hedge against. Uh, you know, it's a, it's another asset class as a hedge against downturn in the broader economy. So I, I'm going to emphasize again, this is this uh, need versus greed argument. Okay. So one of the things I learned long time ago from my marketing mentor, Gary Halbert, was sell to need first. So go where the need is. Now there's going to be need for new opportunities. There's going to be need for the ability to raise money for sports and other things. And I think, um, 
I'll get to that again a little further along. That also is part of this story is that NRHL, I think, shows the need in the marketplace, even in the face of headwinds and difficulties for a new way of raising capital. That's very powerful stuff, guys, and that's, uh, or ladies and gentlemen, I should say. I don't want to insult anybody. So um, it it's shows that there is an opportunity here for us to show what, what we have as a valuable tool and not just some novelty, uh, which I think the positioning that is is been primary, at least in the minds of the marketplace, for, for our existence to this point. I don't think the need side of our story has ever been shown, and I think that market demonstration is going to happen through um, National Rural Hockey League and similar type situations that if we can step into that gap and fill the need, then the lights will shine brightly on what we're doing and all the rest of the troubles will be wiped away. <laughs> so that's where to focus. Um, in sports, don't get distracted, right? So again, it's all about the order book and showing that we have something useful here. The entire point of all this, the entire point of the nonprofit, the entire point of the mission was to, to build the market, show the market works, and that it has a, a rightful place, and that it's useful, and in fact, that it's needed. That's even more valuable. And that it's not a need that we're trumping up, <laughs> pardon the pun, but it's an actual need that really exists, and we can step into that. So still on track for that. I have session title due on Monday in abstract. I'm uh, working on that in the background. Um, also with guest invitations, we're, we're going to get um, to try to bring some speakers to the table. The directors of the Hero Club C-Suite want us to bring a, a female sports um, heroes, if possible, right, that have found success in business because that's a really uh, hard category for them to locate. So that's the call. So I'm putting this on the record now. If, um, if you know any professional athletes, uh, in and around New York or who are willing to travel to because I don't there's not going to be a paid speaking gig um, and I doubt it because it, you know, they're asking Trump to show up and and that's probably a favor from Jeff so um, they're gonna they always have very um, well-known people there so it's it's not going to be a paid event so you have to get yourself there but if there are um, if there are people in and around New York or who will travel there and want to speak that are female athletes who um, um, you know need to be pretty high profile. This is you know think in terms of of major brands and that kind of thing because those are the people that usually speak. People like John Mackey and and that uh, it doesn't have to be that large, but you know pr pr enough that the public or somebody watching and at least in business doesn't have to be public, but their audience is B two B mainly. So if it's somebody the business community will recognize, that's okay. So we're going to do that, um, try to help them do that. And if um, we don't get anybody, J Jason already has a few ideas there. If we don't uh, fill the need there, then we can move down and broaden the category. We also um, get passes for our team and the people that from our team that will speak. Obviously, Jeff will allow Zach and Bernie and any of the people that we need to bring to to because to, we get to put a table on the event the whole time and all that. That's all part of our council. So... That's fine. And then 10 guest passes for people we want to give away. And we'll figure out how to um, parcel those off later. Uh, it's not, not necessary to do that right now. Uh, so I've sent out the second council um, email update yesterday. That was the, the or on Thursday, the 22nd, announcing the council alone. Its newsletter uh, will start on the 1st of September. There's, I think, about 80 people on the council right now, and it's still trickling in. Um, they, they've had it on, on an email marketing cycle that uh, goes through different lists and different um, formats, and I'm getting a, a steady trickle of people from that. And then um, even in the face of all the things that are going on, the market itself um, is, is making continuous uh, new records. This is not connected just to the sports shares program because we've had larger programs over longer periods of time with as much or more bonus margin that didn't drive the price up. Um, and so I don't believe that's uh, that's an appropriate way of looking at it. Um, look at it in terms of the the market is is growing. I mean, people could still sell they don't, and they could not invest the bonus margin. They could sit on it or they could turn it back into basically bonus margin cash, which would sit on their account 
for conversion day. So the market mechanics haven't changed. The people that were general public that didn't have any program participation still provided that their accounts are not fraudulent, um, still get paid out uh, each month on the first per the rules we've had going now for about a year. Program people cannot, basically their, their cash out comes in the conversion and it's not a cash out and it's, it's net out the bonus margin of your total bonus of your total account. You know, subtract that uh, total account value of cash and your sports shares. So that's a total value, right? You net out the bonus margin and that's the starting point for conversion. And I've stated very clearly that we don't know exactly which way this is uh, going to go because I do expect regulatory participation in this because it's a head start. Um, so anybody that participates by um, donating and re receiving anything, uh, the, the promotional items, the, the Golden Eagle, Silver Eagle, those kinds of things, what you're doing is you're giving us nonprofit operating income. Remember, this is a nonprofit entity until it's not. And that, that the nonprofit's job and my claim is it's, it's, it's doing and has done that as evidenced by sending our first order to the SEC prior to them filing this case. That happened prior to this. That was the whole point of the whole operation was to, to build the case for this being legitimate and get orders. Well, that was our first order. So I, I don't see how you can put that together and say we didn't do what we said we were going to do. We did exactly what we said we were going to do, and we're still doing what we said we were going to do. So, um, so that money gives us operating income um, to, you know, to get off this, you know, nonprofit into the real thing. Um, and so that's it. That's what the money is for. And if we don't do that, you know, it's a donation. It's clearly marked that. Um, it's gone. It's a uh, it's contribution to the cause, like a political campaign or a church or a nonprofit of any type. Uh, if, you know, we get through the conversion, which everybody is working with everything we have, believe me, every asset, every resource, everyone we know to get it to there, then when that net out takes place, we, we go to the SEC and we say, look, this is the final state of the pilot market. This is where these balances are. Uh, we want to bring them somehow into the exempt uh, structure, which we anticipate will be trading like NRHL and others like that. We want to bring that in there, but we don't want to do it in such a way as we've unfairly prejudiced those people uh, in the process. And also there has to be some kind of arrangement with the leagues that we have, because when we go from nonprofit structure to for-profit structure, the the nonprofit part disappears and remember that that allows us to use names and logos and likenesses and all that but that doesn't happen when you move it over so that kind of mandates that forces the the the, the agreement or something to happen there because if we move it over without that we're just using their IP and trading on them without paying them so that that can't happen you see there's a disconnect there that's real so you, you, the agreements have to take place and the teams have to be listed first on the, the new market. You know, in the NRHL case, obviously, they're not going to, we have an agreement, right? We're working on an agreement. So the move over mandates that the big teams and the leagues that we have on the pilot market, we have to figure that out before we can move them over. So there's that part and then there's the regulatory part, which is how, what is a fair relationship between this starter market and the and the transfer. So what are the what is the credits for the transfer and is that, is that fair? So anyway, I just want to be absolutely crystal clear about this that there's no taking money out of the system if you're participating with programs now. The whole point of this is to get the program to, to terminate the nonprofit's pro, job all the way and then move the entire thing over and this becomes the New York Stock Exchange of Sports that we've been working on for more than 15 years, almost 20 years if you go back to concept. Okay, so that's where it's at. Um, IP stuff, it's not really worth talking about in the face of everything else right now because um, it's all been handled um, appropriately. The um, Okay, so in the Alpers part, which I usually talk about, we did have a meeting in Irvine um, on, on this, um, not last 
Thursday, but the Thursday prior. I want to wait for Alper's commentary on that because he participated by phone. And he, uh, when he returns for the calls, we will recap that meeting, not before. Um, all right, there is um, SEC request for comment. That's in the response, um, which I'm going to get to wrap all that up at the end when I get to the what's next. Um, really nothing else in the outline from here really is... Yeah, just the commentary about it's always, uh, you know, it always seems impossible until it's done. Um, that's a good quote, and that's for sure true. Danger closest to the goal, that's a sports reference, and it's absolutely true. It's a universal, universal truth. It's every book I've ever read about every single accomplishment that matters um, tells a tale of very similar to ours, if not far worse and more difficult, believe it or not. Um, so, yeah. Uh, no resistance means you're you're really far afield. It means that you're not doing anything. Nothing's happening. Nobody cares. Um, when you start getting close to the goal, things get kind of crazy. So um, let me go through the uh, comments on the last week. Obviously, um, a lot of people wanted to know. So here's what I can say publicly: um, the raise money for women's sports. Okay, so that was commentary from Neil on the last phone call. That's a real gap place to look uh, for new NRHLs. Um, Pompeo says crypto should be regulated like SWIFT. Uh, that's a major interbank transfer system um, that's marching along the regulatory path. Uh, as I said, that the, the kills in on that. They're, they're going to take it over and use the parts that are good and, and discard and kill the rest. Um, three to four months between existential threats. So I've read this a few times and I thought it was worth talking about on this call because I didn't want to scare people, but I, I do know it to be true just from management of many different things over a long period of time. Most businesses, and this includes major industries, nobody excluded, um, they, they face an existential threat about every three to four months. So basically every quarter. Somewhere in, in the company there is some crisis going on. If, there's, if they're good and clever, they maybe doesn't get out usually does these days because information flows so freely, but three to four months, every industry company, actually company, not industry, every company faces something that if not managed right will in, will basically result in their destruction. Um, that's a normal thing, believe it or not. And if you don't believe it's true, just look at GE. I mean, here you have the smartest, supposedly longest standing business people. I mean, some of them in the whole American economy history and that company has cratered to the point that it may not even, I mean, it's hard to think, it may not even be a viable thing. General Electric, that's, if you knew what General Electric does, um, things that you don't even really think about or hear about, um, you would be shocked. I mean, jet engines, uh, infrastructure, electrical stuff, obviously, that's just crazy. So. Um, rapid reaction to things and, you know, having to change course and deal with threats and all. It's just normal. Capital One, I mean, Capital One just um, had the largest breach, I think, in the history of the world. Uh, here are people that are focused on security, and I bragged about how good they are at keeping me notified over potential double charges, and basically all their database got stolen. And they're going to face all kinds of trouble from that, including from regulators. Um, this is just how it is. Um, so what I learned from, from the fun Monday filing of the suit, which, believe me, was not what I thought they were going to do based on what happened previously, is that um, ASM's idea is even more powerful than I thought. Not only did we not lose any assets or people run away, um, any of our major partners, um, they toughened up and, uh, you know, the NRHL said, nope, we're not going anywhere. Uh, it hasn't cost us anything uh, in terms of what we're working on. Uh, in fact, the, the Hero Club C-Suite group marshaled their forces in a way I wasn't even expecting and jumped up and helped us with the press release and took front line. We actually have top story on the, on the, uh, on that issue, if you go to any browser and if, even if you geolocate from other places on the world, in the world, it's us. Um, our response is top story on Yahoo Finance. So that's as far as we need to go. Um, 
that is the response. There isn't going to be anything else said unless the story gets any bigger uh, or something else happens. And based on the way the media works, it started on Monday. It's now Saturday. If the story didn't get picked up by somebody um, bigger than Yahoo Finance, it's not going to be because it's not how it works. Uh, the only way it's going to get bigger is if somebody bigger picks it up and adds to it and does some kind of expose or whatever. You know what? If they do that, it's fine. Uh, I'm not ashamed of our history warts and all, so have at it. Um, that's fine if they want to do that. I don't think it'll happen. Um, I'm not seeing the story get that kind of traction. So I really don't think it's going to get anywhere unless something changes. So that's where that is. Um, I really am happy with the way the response came out. I'm really shocked and, and very pleased at how everybody uh, marshaled up their, their resources and didn't cut and run for the hills. It's fantastic. It's, it's, an, it's actually a humbling, honorable, um, honorable, it's a, sorry, wrong word. It's a humbling thing, and it's an honor to be in a position where uh, everybody that counts still still sees everything the way they do. So uh, that, that just makes me even more dedicated than I was before all of this took place. I would just like to point out that, you know, in the real world, if you just dig around, pick a company name that you love, um, doesn't matter who it is, uh, you're going to find that these kinds of things happen. Um, pick the regulator. If you want to look for the two biggest and teethiest ones, look at the Federal Trade Commission and look at the SEC. Those are the two big ones. Um, makes total sense, actually. One covers investment and one covers trade, right? So that's kind of the backbone bloodline of the country. So I get it, why they're aggressive, um, even though I don't think their position is uh, correct, uh, as evidenced by our response. Um, you know, I understand their necessity to protect the markets, and I, I'm not an anti-regulatory person. <laughs> In fact, quite the contrary. Um, and anybody that's been on this journey with us knows that I was the voice of regulation and law, and let's put this in order, and when we were in Costa Rica, and I got a lot of resistance on that. Um, I had to fight a lot for that, and I, we spent a lot of money on that, and we still spend a lot of money on legal approaches. So um, to cast that shadow over what we're doing, it just simply doesn't represent the truth. That's our side of the story. We're entitled to that. Um, I don't believe it will succeed uh, based on this storyline because it's it's just it's not what took place. So um, anyhow, we are top story. That's what counts. Um, the market stats are not changing based on this news, which I've watched very closely. Um, breaking things, that's a Silicon Valley thing. That just means you throw caution to the wind and just break the laws willy nilly. That That's the gambling folks. And that's daily fantasy. Sorry, it is black letter, black letter. Uh, illegal. Um, nothing that we've done as black letter, I, I would never have uh, engaged or agreed to or otherwise participated in it if I found that to be the case. Um, arguability over legality is why courts and lawyers exist. So, um, you know, that's just the way it works. So we're not, you know, we didn't go out with the idea of screw it, this is illegal, but we're just going to do it. No, that's simply not true. That's not what happened. Um, all right, so the stats are unchanged. This doesn't have anything to do with um, the actual market operations. And in fact, in the complaint, they said sports as an asset class. And I'm actually glad they did that because at least it got some kind of uh, attention as an idea. And I'll, I'll, we took that and put that, repeated it back in the Yahoo Finance reply. Um, we do have SEC counsel looking at it, um, just so you know. I know that information is going to be news to some of you, so... Um, it's somebody that's close to Bernie um, and that prior conversations from prior issues have, have been discussed. So it's a familiar party to us. So they're going over that now. Re formal responses do 60 days from Monday. So we'll see what we're going to do with that. Um, as I said in the response, we're going to obviously try to work it out amicably and to everybody's satisfaction as quickly as we can. Um, that's the priority. Um, but we, we're not under any uh, hard, quick deadline to figure it out other than our own desire, and obviously it would be best, better sooner than later. So the priority is getting it done sooner rather than later. So know that. Um, as far as backing our claims that we're legitimate and been working on this and not screwing around, I just would point out that if I transcribe all the conference calls, um, nearly 400 of them, um, it would be about 40,000 pages standing 13 feet high. 
Um, and if necessary, I absolutely will file that in the court record along with everything else we've ever done, which would probably constitute hundreds of thousands of pages. Um, I would say easily hundreds of thousands of pages of documents. Um, so that's, uh, that's what's going to happen if it ends up in trial, which is nobody, nobody uh, is in favor of that. And in fact, I, I read statistics that range from 90 to 95 percent of the time this, that doesn't happen. There is no trial. So uh, that's the numbers. PayPal as an example. Yeah, I would say that's very similar. Anybody that remembers that from 1999, if you don't, uh, or 2000, take a look. I'm not going to go through it here. A uh, very similar thing took place with Elon and PayPal and turned out okay. Um, Elon's 2008 moment, I think, you know, there, that's, there's probably a combination of things here uh, for us. We're kind of getting both at the same time. His PayPal moment and the, the, the crash of 2008, although the economy isn't crashing, it's definitely slowing it, slowing down, which is, is making it far more difficult for us to, um, even prior to any of this, prior to, prior to Monday, um, I, I've seen it. In the numbers for the last uh, three months or so, uh, even exclusive of the of the grants um, program, which was voluntarily stopped just because, as I stated, and that's the truth, um, that was my, sus my suspicion of the issue, but I, I didn't know for sure. Um, but it's been weakening in spite of that. So I do know that there's a weakness out there. So we, we're going to have to buckle down and um, look at everything, and we are. Um, I'm even going so far as to, you know, ride bicycle instead of driving a car um, to the places I need to go. It's totally fine. You can get around here just fine on a bike. But, you know, whatever it takes to, to just uh, pare it down so that we stay on track um, and continue to build the order book because, um, you know, there's two parts to this I see now. It's build the order book and, and resolve this matter. Uh, and those two things will lead to a uh, successful outcome on investment and will lead to a successful outcome on everything else. So um, again, it's really the same, <laughs> it's the same thing, but reformatted, I would put it, you know, it's regulation and financing, right? Uh, and then financing is, predi predi uh, is predicated upon um, actually getting orders, which we have number one in hand. And let me state for the final time, um, there's, they have not fleed. Uh, it is it is still in hand, okay, and it is not made up. So that's um, that's that. Um, nine ten. So there's two actually two things on the tenth of September. There's another group discussion. This is before my this the one I mentioned on the seventeenth is our discussion. So we get to frame the the conversation, and this is goes out to their three hundred thousand, four hundred thousand distribution list plus all of their syndicated places, that's the airline seat backs and all that. So that content goes out through their content network. So whatever we put up, that content will be spread around and, and, and seen not just inside of their network, but through all their partner networks. There's some hotel stuff and um, it was all listed in the document folder that I've sent several times that showed the benefits of the council. So it goes through all that. Um, but they're having a meeting on the 10th of September to generally discuss ec the economy uh, slowing down and all of that as a and they're inviting anybody from the whole group so it's kind of an all call um, let's talk about ideas on fixing the economy that's on the um, on the 10th so there's a lot of focus on economic growth solutions and we need to be in that conversation at every chance we can get and we are I'm going to take every opportunity to get be part of that um, so NRHL shows a couple of things. I mentioned this above. It shows that um, ASM power of this idea is, is, is even bigger than I realized um, and that the need is real. And I would say um, a, a factor that's affecting probably NRHL getting more money to do what they want to do is the recent collapse, speedy collapse of X, XFL. I mean, it went out of the market in out really fast and and that kind of thing is going to scare i mean first of all sports leagues are tough uh, we've talked about this on the calls to fund and sustain so when you have a recent high profile failure in the cat in the same plane um it splatters on everybody so that is probably one of the reasons i would say it's more difficult and and that's um 
you know, that's something we bring to the table because we bring fan money, you know, think Green Bay. We bring, by the way, one of the ideas from uh, the meeting we had, not this past Thursday, but the Thursday before that, was would we be interested in having somebody from Green Bay formerly um, on the board or the advisors because we talk about Green Bay as an example. I said, that's brilliant. Yeah, absolutely. But we'll cover that when Alper gets back on the call. He can he can explain all that and what was covered. I wanted you to hear it from him instead of from me. Um, so, yeah, uh, fan money, uh, it's more patient and it's more available. So um, I think you have you have the need and then you have the willing participants and we bridge the gap. And that's that's the magic of getting everything done here is show the need, prove the need, fill the need, and then backfill everything else. Solve all the other issues, whatever accounting, regulatory, figure out. The SEC gets no benefit out of a trial. It's costly and expensive and risky because they can lose, okay? They can. They don't usually, but they can. And in their case, the risk would be basically punching a hole through the code big enough to drive container ships of scammers through it. I, I still believe that's the main issue here. And I think if we offer up some way to close that, um, that's the main issue. Because it, in our investigation, both before, during, and after, and even to this moment, that fact pattern, the one that we have, which is where you have donations into a nonprofit entity and then benefits accrue from somewhere else. Um, well, we had numbers of things, party admissions, um, bonus margin credits, free margin credits, um, swag bags, and it was it was an, a family of things. And in in I would say most of them, yes, but not all of them. Um, there were share grants, right? So that fact pattern doesn't exist, but it creates an arguable case where you could make a nonprofit and basically get around the entire SEC code. Um, relating to restrictions on fundraising. And I totally get that, but that's not the engineering that we did. 2011 was the nonprofit formation. 14 was the um, reconstituting of CWH. The timeline doesn't, doesn't, I mean, it wasn't constructed for that purpose. The came along afterward and um, just became like an added thing to throw in there to maintain the fundraising to accomplish the goal, which is what we did, which is produce an order and actually more orders in the queue. So that's what that's the simple storyline narrative is that the nonprofit's job exactly happened according to what it was supposed to do. Um, ASM, I've said from the start, not ASM, but the nonprofit side of it. Well, no, I did say ASM. AS, getting ASM to become legal would be a political operation. Um, it has become a function of the nonprofit as a political operation. We did file a 501H4 election many years ago, which was a lot, allows us to participate in the political process. I did look at that because there are restrictions and rules about those things. And anything that we do that's political, talking about candidates or anything of that nature is issue advocacy because the person is affecting the policies and the policies are affecting the product. And that's the reasoning. So. We are enabled for political action, which means we can do it. And if that wants somebody wants to try to challenge that, fine, but I'll turn it into a free speech case. So, um, and that's an even bigger question and a hot button topic big time. So if you want to elevate our station another level, challenge the political part, and I will turn it into a constitutional free rights case. So that'll be another kick up the ladder. Um, and no, we're not giving up now. There's too many people involved in this. We have more than 900 stakeholders. I'm not going to walk away from them and their investment in this. So, you know, we're going to keep going. We're going to finish what we started. And the key to that is get to the end of the year, um, build the order book, and the order book will create the investment and everything else and get the regulatory piece fixed, which seems to come through a court case. You know, I mean, sometimes that's what it takes, folks. I mean, um, you know, it, it does does happen like this sometimes. Um, it's been my suspicion for some time, and Alper will verify that, that this would be what it would take. Um, and you can ask him yourself if you don't believe me. I've told him that for quite a while. It might take a court decision to make all this work. So um, there we have it. That's all I've got. Um, these videos will come every Saturday. 
uh, in the morning, roughly about this time. Uh, I'm not going to set an exact schedule. We'll just call it Saturday morning. Again, the format is um, Monday teleconference goes out only to authorized people. And then the summary of the week's events comes by video on Saturday. And then a little bit of a teaser or what to expect coming into the next week's conference call, which will go out again um, to authorized people. So rinse and repeat. That's how it goes. Thanks for your Saturday morning. I hope this uh, information is helpful. And um, that's all I've got for today. I'll speak with you next Saturday. Bye now.